Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. And welcome to Wednesday's edition of the Doctor Who Daily. Yes, I skipped the day, not that anyone's noticing or anyone's really watching the videos, but I am back. If you're feeling charitable, please smash the subscribe button and the like button and follow me for more of a convo on Doctor Who or anything else you want to talk about right now at Movies TV Mad. At a time like this, a desperate global crisis, yes, global, it is everywhere. The corona virus is everywhere, infecting people, making them ill, killing people slowly. At a time like this, we need the doctor, our doctor, not the first doctor, not the second, not the third, not the fourth, not the fifth, not the sixth, not the seventh, not the eighth, not the ninth, not the tenth, not the eleventh, not the twelfth, but the thirteenth doctor, because she is our doctor right now. Today, Jodie Whittaker, from her very home, while she's isolating, did a little performance for everyone as the doctor to try and set our minds at rest. It was beautiful. I don't have editing software. I can't put it up for you properly. But I'm going to hold it up for you so you can watch it. Then we're going to do the audio of it. Then we're going to discuss it. Oh, hi. This is an emergency transmission. If you're seeing this, the TARDIS must have detected an upsurge in psychological signals from somewhere in space and time. Basically, I think somebody somewhere might be a little bit worried. I'm actually just self-isolating, or as I like to call it... Hiding from an army of Sontarans, but keep that to yourself. Now, here's what I do in any worrying situation. One, remember, you will get through this and things will be all right. Even if they look uncertain, even if you're worried, darkness never prevails. Two, tell jokes, even bad ones, especially bad ones. I am brilliant at bad ones. Three, be kind. Even kinder than you were yesterday. And I know you were super kind yesterday. Look out for each other. You won't be the only one worried. Talking will help. Sharing will help. Look out for your friends, your neighbours, people you hardly know, and family. Because in the end, we're all family. Four, listen to science and listen to doctors. Right? They've got your back. Five, stay strong. Stay positive. You've got this. And I will see you. Very soon. Wow, wow, wow. Now we are going to do the audio of this because, just in case you couldn't hear it properly, then we're going to discuss it because I'm very excited about this. Oh, hi. This is an emergency transmission. If you're seeing this, the TARDIS must have detected an upsurge in psychological signals from somewhere in space and time. Basically, I think somebody somewhere might be a little bit worried. I'm actually just self-isolating, or as I like to call it, hiding from an army of Sontarans. But keep that to yourself. Now, here's what I do in any worrying situation. One, remember, you will get through this, and things will be all right. Even if they look uncertain, even if you're worried, darkness never prevails. Two, tell jokes, even bad ones, especially bad ones. I'm brilliant at bad ones. Three, be kind, even kinder than you were yesterday. And I know you were super kind yesterday. Look out for each other. You won't be the only one worried. Talking will help. Sharing will help. Look out for your friends, your neighbours, people you hardly know, and family. Because in the end, we're all family. Four, listen to science and listen to doctors. Right? They've got your back. Five, stay strong. Stay positive. You've got this. And I will see you very soon. Yes, you will, Doctor. Absolutely fantastic. That was brilliant. Now, I don't know if she was doing a bit of improv at home. First of all, think about it. She's actually got her outfit at home. That's amazing. And I actually said this about the soaps, EastEnders, Coronation Street, Emmerdale. Why don't the producers get them to sit in front of the screen like this and perform their characters isolating, being in lockdown. It will be very interesting. Well done, Jodie Whittaker. That was amazing. That's the doctor. You know when she says, be kind, and she goes, I know you were kind yesterday, but just be super kind, or whatever she said, right? It's like she was talking to the kids then. 
And this reminds me of David Tennant's doctor doing these little Doctor Who shorts that he used to do. Or when he did um, the music of the spear. Do you remember that? One of those Doctor Who concerts. The kids loved Tennant's doctor. The adults loved him as well. But so did the kids. That was a performance for children as well. That's what I liked about it. Now, I'm going to ask the obvious question. Who wrote that? Did she come up with that herself? Did Chris Chibnall send her a message and they worked this out together? I'd like to know. But if she did this on her own, even bigger kudos to her. And it also shows that the issue with current Doctor Who isn't Jodie, isn't her gender, but it's the creative team at Doctor Who. That's the thing. That's the thing. I've said this before. Imagine if Stephen Moffat was writing for this artist. It would be amazing. You can only perform what they've written for you on the page. And if they tell you to have no personality, right, and do it the way they want you to do it, that's the only way you can do it. So again, I say well done, Jodie Whittaker. So tomorrow is an auspicious day. 15 freaking years, which makes me feel really old, since Rose aired on the TV. Rose, the very first episode of this Doctor Who revival back in 2005. I remember it. It was an interesting episode because it didn't try and stray too far away from the tone and tamper from classic Who. The music was still very similar to how they did it in Classic Who, I'm talking about the incidental music. The um, feeling of it, um, the monsters seemed very Doctor Who. They, it wasn't great CG or anything. It seemed like they didn't want to stray at first too far away from what was done in Classic Who. But this is a really, really good episode. It's the first episode of a, of, of a revival. It has to work. 10 million people watch this episode, right? Or 9 million, or whoever, right? Whatever. But it was amazing. It hit the spot. First of all, our brand new companion, Rose, Billy Piper, was amazing. She was off the scale. Rose, basically what Russell T. Davies did with Rose, we all had a perception of Billy. She was this girl next door before she was in Doctor Who, this pop star. She was Billy. You know, Billy, you know, did a couple of songs that we liked. And he used that perception of her to form her character. This ordinary everyday girl who lived on a council estate, who was brought up by her mum because her dad died when she was a very little baby, right? A very little girl. And that kind of, it, it was relatable. It was relatable. She was a relatable character. But then in comes the casting of Christopher Eccleston, which was brilliant, which was amazing. It truly was. He hit the spot. Russell wrote him in such a way. He wrote him as Chris Eccleston. Oh, I'm Chris Eccleston. I don't have to have a posh accent to play the Doctor. Even David Tennant changed his very persona to become a totally new Doctor. But Chris's Doctor was Chris. Fighting for the little person. Yeah. I don't want to talk about where I'm from. All right. You know, that kind of thing. Loved it. And he nailed it. From the very beginning, he was his very own irritation of the Doctor. And it worked. Murray Gold's music was brilliant. It was a new modern way of doing Doctor Who. We were introduced to an additional cast. The multi-talented Noel Clark, Camille Caldrey as Jackie Tyler. It was a small cast, but it worked. And Chris and Billy had brilliant chemistry. For me, in that episode, I didn't feel this situation that these two were in love at first sight. I got this impression of an older brother and a younger sister. That's why I was quite shocked when people started saying to me, well, actually, they're supposed to be in love. I never really got that to really doomsday. But anyway, that was the interpretation. That's what Russell was trying to do. But with Chris and Billy, I think the dynamic and chemistry was really different. And I just remember being so excited and going over to watch Doctor Who Confidential for the first time, listening to Russell speak so positively and excitingly about Doctor Who. It was a very special time. 
And tomorrow, we have got a very special event. Russell T Davies premieres on Twitter. And on the official BBC website, we will have a prequel never seen before from the episode Rose. Russell will be on Twitter reacting to the episode. He'll be watching it. We'll be watching it at home. How do you watch it? If you've got it on Prime Video, if you've got it on BBC iPlayer, if you've got it on Netflix, got it on DVD or Blu-ray, watch it. Exactly. Dead on seven. Hashtag trip of a lifetime. And all of us Doctor Who friends will be here with you at the very same time as we're all stuck indoors in a very scary time. In one of the scariest times in human history, the Doctor is there to keep us safe. And I'll be there on Movies TV Man, which is my Twitter handle, to get you all through it as well. So please join me. Please comment down below, like, share and subscribe, and I'll be back tomorrow with even more Doctor Who Daily. It's a massive day, and I can't wait.